sorry. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes, I think I, I hand that to you, Albert. OK, you thank you. OK, uh, uh, welcome, everybody. I hope you're doing uh, uh, well in these difficult times. Um, uh, so uh, I hope you're doing well. So could you please give me an answer if you're doing well in the chat? I want to get you in some active mode immediately. Okay, you're doing fine. Excellent, excellent. Doing good. Ready for the lockdown to be over though, I can imagine. Excellent, excellent. Okay. Okay, thank you for your uh, answers. Um, as you might remember, my name is Albert Kraai. I'm, um, I, you only saw me at the introduction. I am the, uh, the lecturer who does the group work starting next week. We're going to create a social enterprise uh, um, uh, together or you in a group uh, with me hope, hopefully helping. Uh, Georgina, as you as, uh, probably know, had to uh, leave for Belgium today because she had to go to the funeral of our, uh, uh, her uh, father-in-law. Uh, so our condolences go to uh, Georgina. And she asked me to step in and introduce the guest lecturer for today. And that guest lecturer is a very special person because it's a colleague of mine. It's a colleague at the Hague University of Applied Science. It's Dennis Petri. Uh, he will introduce himself uh, shortly. I have one question for you. Uh, next week, we are going to do group work. And I have, uh, in order to be uh, efficient in that group work or effective, you need to get to know your group members. And I have an idea. And maybe it's an innovative idea. It could be a stupid idea. And I'd like to discuss that with you after this guest lecture. So I hope you stay on after the lecture. Uh, but now, without further ado, I'd like to give the podium to Mr. Dennis Petri, uh, and he will uh, introduce himself first. Dennis, the floor is yours. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Albert. And also, um, thank you, um, uh, Georgina, for, uh, for inviting me uh, to, uh, to give this guest lecture. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to be uh, working together um, on this, uh, this very important module. On local development. Just to confirm, is the is the screen visible that I'm sharing? Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. So I'll be. I'll, I was asked to 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 say a few things on about the role of faith-based organizations as actors in local development. Um, and I gave my talk uh, uh, a subtitle um, that will be become clear towards the end: um, religious literacy to promote local development, effective local development. So I. Um, um, I, I actually want to um, um, uh, present a few few notions, a, a few examples, um, and uh, um, mainly I, I hope that my my uh, my talk will serve as uh, a trigger for for a group discussion. I think that's the best way we can uh, we can we can work um, together today. Um, just to introduce myself. Um, quickly. So I am uh, indeed a, a lecturer at the Hague University. I also lecture at uh, a Costa Rican university called the uh, Latin American University of Science and Technology. Um, I am a dual citizen of two countries, of Mexico and the Netherlands, but I've been living in Costa Rica for uh, quite some time. Um, actually, I spend my time, I divide my time between Costa Rica and the Netherlands. Um, and um, well, I've done quite some, some research on, on, on different topics, including the uh, relation between religion and politics and religious freedom. Um, I also run a, a small charity called the Foundation Platform for Social Transformation. And uh, an important program of that charity is the Observatory of Freedom in Latin America. So um, that, that should give you an idea um, of, of my background. Um, and, and so, um, in, in a way, I'm, I'm both an academic and a, a, a practitioner. I'm really uh, always been interested in working um, in the uh, political dimension of development cooperation. Um, so, so there you go. And here's my email address in case you would like to ask me any questions. Um, I also would like to take this opportunity to quickly um, mention my most recent book. Um, that's called The Specific Vulnerability of Religious Minorities, which includes 
um, case studies of three uh, religious groups in, in Latin America, because Latin America really is the region I, I focus on, and most examples I I, I, I will be talking about um, will uh, today will also be based on my um, uh, experience in, in this region. Um, so I, I just would like to mention this. If you're interested, send me an email in, in, in this book and I can send you a, a copy. Um, and um, I also refer you to the Observatory of Religious Freedom in Latin America, which uh, contains a lot of information um, about uh, religious freedom in the region. Uh, that, uh, that we work hard to keep up to date. So this is the uh, promotional part of my talk. Now let's get into the, uh, the subject matter. So outline, um, first I want to start out by discussing the marginal interest in religion in the social sciences. Um, and this is not just a theoretical issue, it has consequences, consequences um, because it leads to the neglect of religion in development. Um, and, and some of those consequences are that the needs and concerns of religious groups are not considered, which is obviously a, a problem um, from a, a human rights uh, perspective. Um, but more importantly, um, I think um, the contribution of religious groups to development is not sufficiently recognized because of, of this. Um, and there's a huge potential um, that, as, as we will see. Um, and of course, the role of religion in society is, is, is very important, but I think it's important. It's, it's necessary that we um, just go back to it and, 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 and explain why uh, religion is, is, it plays such an important role. Um, and, uh, and then we can go into the importance of religious literacy um, and justify it as a key dimension to conceptualize effective uh, development uh, strategies. And the reason is that um, FBOs, faith-based organizations, make distinct contributions um, to local development. And I also would like to present a couple of, of promising ways forward. Just mention those um, because I think they could be of interest to, to you. So, um, but first of all, we all know when we talk about development, uh, of course, the, 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 the international framework that international experts agreed upon um, at, at the moment are the Sustainable Development Goals, which are 17 um, goals um, that were defined at the UN level, um, which is it's quite a lot to have 17 goals, right? When you, when you set goals, normally you have two or three goals. These are 17, but this is, of course, the result of uh, this international negotiation where everyone wanted to have their own uh, goals included. Um, but nevertheless, it's, it's, it's a beautiful list eh, of, of, of objectives uh, for development. Um, and, and there's two things that are very interesting about these development goals. One is that they uh, were developed uh, by uh, uh, with the contribution um, of many religious organizations, many faith-based organizations were involved in the development of these goals. And so, so that's, 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 that's noteworthy. But what's also noteworthy is that none of those goals are actually related to religion or take religious dimensions into account. And so those religious organizations made their contributions um, to these discussions. Um, but at the same time, um, well, wanted to be neutral um, and, and, and I guess neutrality is a, is a positive thing, but then there's also specific uh, contributions um, that religious organizations can make that are directly related to religion that are, are not very visible in, in the sustainable development goals. So um, just mentioned this. Now let's go into the marginal interest in religion and social sciences. And this is just a, a, a quick overview of, of the literature about, about this. Um, but in general, this is what we can say, yeah, that social sciences um, has ignored religion and religious studies um, and the religious dimension of, of, of many, many things, uh, many areas um, for, for, for a long time. First of all, this can be uh, connected to the influence of Marx's reductionist approach to religion. You'll remember uh, Karl Marx said that religion is the opium for the people, um, and, and that's all religion is. You know, it's, 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 a, it's an instrument to manipulate and oppress um, the, the working class, the labor classes, right? And, and that, 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 that's you know, Marx's vision. Um, and you know, this could be true um, in, 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 in some cases, but there's much more to religion than just uh, being an instrument of oppression, right? Okay. Um, then um, there's this 
uh, tradition in classical liberalism to confine religion to church state matters. So whenever there was research about religion in social sciences, it was related to uh, the relation between church and the state and whether the church was dominating the state or the state was dominating the church. Um, but really, uh, that's, that's just one tiny dimension of, of religion, of course. Um, and then, of course, there's also this predominance of secularization theory. Yeah? There was this theory in, the social, in sociology that uh, well, the world, when it uh, um, uh, reaches a stage of modernization, will become more secular and religion will start playing a less important role um, in, in, in society. And, and that, that, that really dominated um, and the academic the discussions on religion for, for, for decades, really. And in part, it was wishful thinking. People were actually hoping that religion would disappear from uh, the public sphere. And, and that's really not what happened. And actually, what's challenged quite uh, uh, visibly by the uh, September 11 uh, and this, this trend of radical Islamic revivalism uh, in recent years. Um, but that, that just brought religion back. Um, to to the um, to the uh, to the stage uh, and 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 definitely proved that secular secularization theory was wrong. Huh? Um, religion is not going away, and that's that's <laughs> that, that's actually. But it 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 was very influential. And then of course um, another aspect that's that's not very often mo noticed, but there's declining levels of personal rel religiosity of academic staff. And so when academics are not religious themselves, they have a hard time understanding. Religion, um, and 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 that's and th that's that's also reality, and that also contributes to explain the marginal interest uh, in religion in in social sciences. Okay, now this uh, neglect has consequences um, for development, as I already announced. So, what are those consequences? Well, first, of course, there there, there can be talk of uh, uh, an ontological injustice, so this, this is maybe a, a bit of a, a technical term, but essentially this, uh, this, this idea of secularization um, essentially subordinates um, the secular worldview, uh, uh, the religious worldviews to, to secular worldviews, and so uh, to the secular worldview, and so religious perspectives um, are not taken into consideration. It actually contradicts um, the, 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 the main tenet of, of liberalism, which is that um, you know, all, all views should have the freedom to be expressed, but somehow you know, religious worldviews are, 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 are less considered. Um, so that's, that's uh, conceptually, ontologically an injustice. But it also leads to religious illiteracy. And so what is religious illiteracy? It means that um, whether it's academics, uh, journalists, policy makers, individuals, um, they don't get religion, they don't understand why religion is important and what it is and what role it plays in society. And, 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 and of course that is problematic because it does play an important role in society and, and therefore you cannot really understand what's going on in society. And, and so if you don't understand religion, you cannot operationalize religion as an academic, uh, understand it, define it, um, develop variables, etc. Uh, but it also has consequences for policymakers, right? Because, well, it leads to blind spots in empirical observation, very important blind spots. Um, everything related to religion is just not taken into consideration. Um, but it's also an obstacle um, to evidence-based policymaking and development planning. Why? Because, as I said, religion is an important part of society. And, and so if if religious aspects are not taken into account, then you know the, 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 the key word right now is evidence-based policy making. But um, if it's not based on all the evidence, then then of course um, you know those, those policy initiatives and development projects will not sufficiently be um, informed right um, by by the right uh, the right notions. So so those are uh, a couple of consequences of the neglect of religion for development. And so. Well, what happens when the needs and, and concerns of religious uh, groups are, are not considered? I'll just give a few examples, uh, mainly from my, my experience in England. First of all, a very recent example is the public health measures to combat COVID-19. Right? They have led to serious restrictions of, of religious freedom. And of course, there were health measures, uh, but um, there were um, um, many, many restrictions on freedom of worship and many houses of worship 
uh, were closed um, and uh, uh, because of the pandemic. And, and of course, you could say, well, it's necessary because we need to deal with the pandemic. And I guess that's true. Um, but uh, um, maybe a little more sensitivity to the needs of and concerns of religious groups would have been in, in order. I mean, there's, there's been um, very serious restrictions on the uh, humanitarian work uh, that uh, religious groups do with uh, migrants, for example, on the US-Mexican uh, border. Um, and, and, and those things, well, are, are quite important. And there's been police interventions in religious services in, in Brazil. Um, so th those are really striking images, right? So, so uh, a little more sensitivity to the needs of, of religious groups would have been in, in order. So that's one example. Another example um, is the zoning laws. When we're talking about urban planning at the, at the local level, because this, this course, this module is about uh, local development. Well, there, there, there is often in many countries a prohibition for the establishment of places of worship in residential areas. But places of worship actually need to be in residential areas because those, those, those religious groups, they want to be close to the people, right? Um, and, 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 and when, but, but generally, um, the, those, uh, there's prohibitions for all kinds of, of, of planning reasons. And so um, churches and mosques and synagogues end up being located in commercial areas or in, in industrial areas. And, and that's not, not ideal also from the perspective of, of safety. So you got that. Um, there's of course also this misguided idea um, of separation of church and state. Don't understand religion. There's, uh, there's many policies trying to exclude religion from the public sphere um, based on this interpretation of the separation of church and state, which is a very important, necessary principle, but it, it not, must not be misguided and understood as um, yeah, an exclusion of, of religious views in, in public debate. And then there's securitization theory, which is related to all those uh, um, these concepts of the um, notions that uh, religion is dangerous and, 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 and promoting terrorism, etc. And, and that, that has um, inform also quite some policies, especially in Western Europe. Um, so th those those are those things are problematic. Um, then we go to the contribution of religious groups to development when they're not recognized. And and here, I, I don't really need to give too many examples, but religious groups have been very active throughout the years in 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 education, in health, in humanitarian work, in democratization, in in human rights. I mean, there's been a very, very strong contribution. I mean, the development of the world actually um, was driven to, to a large extent um, by the work of, of, of religious organizations eh? and, 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 and religious charities. And, and, and for, for a very long time, schools and hospitals were run by, by religious organizations. The, the state started stepping in only recently. Eh? Um, and, and so um, this it is important to, to recognize this aspect. Um, and, and of course, and there's some, some very noteworthy examples um, of, of um, uh, um, activists that have really made a, a, a contribution to, to change in, in, in society, like Martin Luther King, for example, or, or um, Monsignor Romero in El Salvador. Those were really people that were driven by their religious convictions that really made a difference. Uh, and, 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 and so it's, it's I think, relevant to recognize that, 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 those, that those contributions. Um, I've done quite some work myself with political dissidents in Cuba um, and, 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 and really the main opposition in Cuba um, are, is our religious organizations. Yeah? Um, so, and, 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 and they are essentially the dissidents to, to the regime. So, so that, that's very important. And there's more examples I can talk about. Um, but uh, yeah, religious groups have a very strong local presence, especially when the state is absent, when the state fails. Um, actually, in Mexico, the Mexican government made an express call uh, to, to religious organizations to help um, them rebuild the social tissue to combat organized crime. Because they realized that they could not deal with you know, all the drug trafficking and everything. They needed the help of religious organizations. And this is just one example. Um, many. So what can we say about the role of religion in society? Well, there's there's a lot that can be said, but just real quickly, and I'll, I'll, I'll finish with, with this. Um, first of all, of course, 80% of the world population is religious. Uh, it's, 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 
that's probably the the the, the main reason um, that that religion plays an important role in society. But but then there's all kinds of philosophical contributions. Eh? There's this idea um, that uh, that Durkheim stresses that religions provide a sense of collective consciousness, eh? a set of shared norms and values. It's the glue that that that, that provides uh, that that keeps um, society together. It's it's a source of social cohesion, right? Um, and Putnam actually speaks of the bridging function of religion as well, um, that, that religions um, and religious people have this, this extra capacity to, to, to establish connections. Again, it's a source of social cohesion. I'm not saying that non-religious people don't have this capacity, but it's noteworthy for, for religion. Um, and then Marx Weber um, famously also uh, cites religion as a source of legitimacy, of authority. Um, which can also be problematic, um, but but in general, there's also this notion of, of social cohesion. And then there's also this, this idea that this the concept of civil society actually emerged um, in, in, in religion. Eh? Uh, Professor Buys uh, of Freie uh, Universiteit in, in Amsterdam um, speaks of, of this, this old Greek notion of, of agape um, that's actually uh, found, finds it, its, its origin in, in the Judeo-Christian tradition. Um, and, uh, well, he actually got, is very radical and he claims that um, uh, uh, civil society as a concept um, could only emerge in religion, right? Um, and from, from religion. Um, and only and, and so well that's that's quite extreme but it's just to underline the importance and eh, the important role of religion in society so and for this reason i believe that religious literacy is essential this is really my, my conclusion today um, it's religious literacy so understanding what religion is about is a key dimension to conceptualize effective development strategies it's a moral imper imperative first of all um because um well, it's time, it's necessary to recognize this sociological reality, 80% uh, of the world population is religious. Um, but it's also uh, uh, necessary to uh, take the specific needs of these people into consideration and materialize this important human right called you know, religious freedom. And that, that's, that's why I think this is a moral uh, imperative, but it's also essential for evidence-based policy making. So I already mentioned that. that it's necessary to take the specific needs of religious groups into consideration, act upon human rights uh, violations related to, to religion, and, and more generally inform um, policy making. Um, and that's, that's, that's key. And of course, also avoid costly mistakes, because um, there, there's, there's this, this, this uh, notion that um, people who um, have a strong commitment to justice, and many religious people have a a strong commitment to justice, right? Um, they are vulnerable, and that's, that's what uh, Marta Nussbaum calls the fragility of, of goodness. And, um, and, and, and it's important to protect those people, right? Um, otherwise, we will be make, making very costly mistakes um, and, and, and actually hindering you know, development, democratization, human rights, because mo many, I'm not saying, I'm not saying mo most, but many human rights activists are actually um, have, have a religious um, um, uh, focus and religious convictions. Um, and then, of course, we need to harness the contribution of religious groups to development. There's huge potential there. Um, I, think, I think it's obvious, but there's, there's, there's really um, a lot that, 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 that we can benefit from, right? So, um, and so finally, yeah, distinct contribution of, of FPOs as active local development. It's a reservoir of altruism and resilience. Um, religious groups are more suited to help other minorities. There's, there's research that, that proves that, that um, minorities um, are actually um, more inclined um, to help other, other minorities. Um, then there's this idea that FPOs can be more effective in some areas um, because they go to, to, the, to the local level where, where states fail. So they've got this bridging capacity, as I already mentioned. Um, uh, and oh, this is this repeats it. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> um, and, and and so some promising ways forward. I just want to mention two examples, um, and then I'll, I'll turn it over to you. Um, I hope I, I remain within the time, uh, Albert. Um, but there's this very interesting case eh, um, uh, in in the municipality of Manisalis, uh, which is a, 
a municipality in, in the center of Colombia, uh, where an interreligious participation mechanism was, was set up. So it's a, a social dialogue function with representatives of different religious organizations. And they're actively involving those uh, religious groups in uh, municipal, uh, in, in, in policy making. So there's um, policy, uh, all, all, all policy topics are, are being discussed and religious organizations or the representatives of those religious organizations can give their input, provide their, their, their feedback um, and, and actively contribute to, to those uh, um, um, to, to, to those those policies um, and so so it's uh, and, and 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 it works very well because it it, it not only allows to um, involve those religious organizations in uh, in policy making um, and, and benefit from their insights etc it also allows to take into consideration um, their specific needs um, for example and that's how they found out that uh, with urban planning and the zoning regulations I mentioned, that was actually creating problems for, for religious groups I and mean, their needs were not taken into consideration. Um, but also it's actually a, a very good model to prevent religious conflict um, uh, and, 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 and overall improve the quality of, of public policy. So, so that's a very promising way, way forward, I, I would like to mention. And another one is that religion is inclu increasingly included on the agenda of international cooperation. So there's um, um, uh, a, a project by the US Agency for International Development that I'm, I'm, I'm involved in now um, called Closing the Gap, that is um, really looking at the relation between religion, religious freedom, political stability and economic development. And the objective is to formulate recommendations so that um, um, US uh, development cooperation um, can can include more um, the the religious dimension of things in in their economic development uh, projects and also peace building projects. Um, so these are just two promising ways forward. I, I would like to mention um, uh, um, with 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 the objective of just underlining the important role of of S FBOs in as actors in in local development. I think I'll leave it here, um, and I, I look forward to uh, to the discussion. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you for your presentation. Um, uh, well within time. Excellent. Thank you. <laughs> so we have uh, uh, some time left for a Q&A. Uh, so uh, if there are any students who would like to ask Mr. Dennis Petri a question about his presentation, please go ahead. Yeah. I would... Hello. Uh, hi, my name is Sandra. Um, GDP major from Ghana. Okay, listening to your presentation is quite interesting, very, very interesting. And I see that um, faith-based uh, faith organizations play a very key role in development. Now, my question is, in this era of this secularization theory, where we have um, religion gradually losing its essence because of science and then the technology around us, how do we now integrate science and religion, for people to believe more in religion, to include it, in, to include faith-based faith organizations in development. Yeah, thank you very much for your, your question. And, and that's, of course, a, a very, very good question. And it's not a question that I can easily solve. Uh, um, but, um, um, of course, uh, you, you could say, eh, in a way, that science um, is also a religion <laughs> in a way, yeah, and, and that, and that, uh, um, uh, but, but, but I, I, I think, um, I, I'm not sure I, I'm, I'm able to, to answer this question, uh, quite, quite frankly. Um, there, 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 are, there are really times that, that science and religion, um, um contradict each other, um, and there's, of course, religious people who refuse to accept um certain scientific principles that that is all very true um on the one hand on the other hand um there's there's also i think we can we we, we think that there's ne not necessarily competition between religion and science eh? that there there are two fields that 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 um actually um are um um, um 
they're, they're two separate fields. That's other. Yeah, they're, they're, they're two distinct fields. Mm -hmm. Religion um, speaks to the supernatural, whereas science speaks to to physics. Right. So 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 they're, they're not necessarily in, in 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 competition with each other. Um, but but I, I I I just yeah want to make a, a, a very general point, and, and that is that. Um, you know, religion is real, right? That, that that's the, and and it plays an important role in society, and so it, it needs to it needs to be taken into consideration. Um, whether whether you know religious groups um, adhere to scientific principles or 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 not, and 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 actually, when you look at economic development, you know, um, you know there, <laughs> there, there, there's many areas where. You know, disagreements on on science are, are are perhaps not that relevant, right? When so so you can have many different perspectives, but in the end, if 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 you know <laughs> people can agree on the necessity of of a humanitarian intervention, for example, right? so that's also a way to, to look at it. Um, but uh, I, I realize I I am uh, I'm not um, I I may not answer your your question satisfactorily. Yeah. Okay. I had a question. Excuse me. Oh. Hello, good afternoon, sir. Yeah, my name is uh, Basia Wanusoro. I'm SJP major, and I'm from Nigeria. Thank you very much, sir, for your presentation. And we've uh, learned uh, so much. We've seen how marginal interest has been in religion. And I just, we learned that uh, there are about 80% world population that are religious. I want to ask her, as important as it is, and having enumerated all the good things that religion has contributed, is there anything about religion that is inimical to development? Why, why, why are people not, uh, why are they not taking it to evil? Why, if it is this important, why are they not taking interest? And why is it not in the forefront of researchers? Try, you also mentioned of a religious uh, illiteracy. Why are they not being researched about and making people know much about it? How important religion is to development? Thank you. Yes, thank you very much for your your question. Um, it's actually two questions, eh? um, yeah. I, I think. Um, so the, the the first question is uh, about the the lack of of research um, on 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 the the relation between religion and development, uh, and that that's your second question actually. Yeah? Um, and um, well, I, I tried to explain that. Um, uh, a large problem is related to you know the Marxist vision of of, of religion, the liberal vision of religion, secularization uh, theory. And those are all elements that explain why there has been um, such such little interest in in religion and, and religion and development. Uh, and, and it's only in recent years that research started. And and actually, you know, one one of the uh, I, I think it's very positive that we're having this discussion now in an academic setting um, about the role of religion in development, and, and that should be done much more. Um, but but it, it has been neglected because there was this idea that religion is backwards. Right? In the modern world, we don't need religion. Right? Religion is is something that uh, that belongs to the past, to to archaic societies. But in modern modernity, we we don't need religion, and, and religion is going away. And that was a mistake. That was really a mistake. And and it also does not do justice to the important contribution of 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 religion uh, to to development. So so I think it's key that that um, we recognize the importance of this, that we put it on the agenda. But it's already changing a little bit. In the past 10, 15, 20 years, more research is being done um, on on the contribution of, of religion to development. Um, but it's very difficult when academic staff does not value this this importance and, and also is religiously illiterate right so that that makes it difficult but we need to work towards that so that's that's one thing and put it on the agenda and teach more about it right and include that that kind of subjects in 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 in, in uh, university curricula etc now on your other question about the negative dimensions of religion um there of course is a big problem with religion and religion is 
is many things. It's many good things. It's many bad things as well. I've emphasized the positive contribution of religion, but there's also um, a negative negative contributions that religion um, has inspired a lot of violence, you know, throughout the uh, uh, you know the history of of of, of humanity. Religion has uh, um, also been very it been um, very um, uh, contradictory to to to, to development. Um, I mean, there's of course this radical group um, uh, in 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 Nigeria, Boko Haram, for example, um, yeah. is actually at at its core opposed to economic development, opposed to education, right? That, that's that's what I understand Boko Haram means. So um, so so yeah, so, so that, and 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 you don't so you don't only see that in in with with Islamic groups, you also see that in Christian groups. Uh, um, um, that, that there's also been you know, a lot of obscurantism um, that has been promoted um, th through um, by, by 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 Christian groups. So so there's 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 all kinds of problems there, definitely. Um, but I do think that in the end, the the the, the positive benefits of, of religion outweigh the the, the negative. Um, but we need to 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 to, to focus on, on on that. Yeah. But thank you. Yeah. Okay, Dennis. Uh... I'd like to give the word to Antoinette. She, she has even two questions. Okay, okay, yeah. Yeah, thank you. I would just like to know more about the case you you, you presented about Manizales because I, yeah, I didn't know about it. So I would like to know more details, details about it. And the second one would be maybe, what do you think about um, the case of, of cities like Rotterdam or like here in, in the Netherlands, where um, religious participation was included, like in, in policy making at the beginning, when when Turkish population arrived to Rotterdam, they were uh, really open to to religious in, uh, participation, and the policy making process was also taking like t like considering those the factor of religion. But it changed over time because of uh, whatever happened, political issues, also like the experience of the cities. But I would like to know because this contradicts a little bit what what you said about uh, maybe that religion was not considered in the policy making process when when people ignored that that re those religious studies. But I think in, in the Netherlands it, it happened like the contrary. They they are not a religious country, or they are in a Protestant. Uh, context, but they actually took in mind, like, took into account those 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 factors when 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 the first um, the first generation of of Turkish uh, labor was was here in in Rotterdam, that it's a super super diverse city. So maybe I would just like to know how you see the case of cities like Rotterdam and and know more about the the Manizales case. Yeah. Just yeah. Okay. Thank you for your questions. Um, so about the, the Manizales case, it's it's really a very very interesting case. Uh, um, so basically, what what's done is that uh, they set up inter-religious um, dialogue platforms. So so that there's there's regular meetings where representatives of religious organizations come together um, and and discuss public policy, right? And um, and they're involved in in policy making. And there's there's two platforms that they have right now. One um, really focuses on uh, religious freedom um, and, and everything that's related to that. Um, and the other focuses on urban planning. Um, and, and so, uh, and because as I explained with the zoning laws, etc., there is a religious dimension or religious people are affected by urban planning. Um, and so, so that, that's really the model. That it's, not, it's not very complex in a way to set up. It's, it's just that um, it's an advisory board to the municipal council and to the mayor of, of the city. Um, and and they, they discuss um, topics, uh, give recommendations, um, provide ideas, um, also provide help for the implementation um, of public policy. Um, so, so they're very much involved in, in shaping um, uh, decision making. Uh, of course, decisions are, are made by the municipal council, but they, they advise the municipal council and it, it it, it works quite well. People are quite happy about about this model, um, and and it's it's definitely something that could be replicated in in, in other parts of the world. And the the interesting part here is also that um, there's there's many fields of public policy that um, they did not one would not expect to have a religious dimension. 
um, or they can affect religious um, concerns, but they do. I mean, what has urban planning got to do with religion, right? Um, but 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 it, but as you can see, it does, and so those. So it, it, it really contributes to, to a more democratic um, discussion. So, um, and, 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 you know, the, the, yeah, and I, I think, I think that's, that's what, I, what, I, what I can say about this um, right now. Um, and uh, regarding your question on, on, on Rotterdam, um, now I must confess, I'm, I'm not 100% familiar with, with what's going on in, in, in Rotterdam. Uh, um, but, but, but I'm sure they're, 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 this initiative that you mentioned is, is, is is, is functioning and 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 um, yeah, you're right to point out maybe that um, religion is not absent from from policy making. Um, you you you're probably right about that. Um, I, I may may have made a, a, a too absolute of a statement, but um, um, but it, it may also be the exception that confirms the rule, right? And um, so so there are some initiatives here and there, um, but in general, um, I would say that religion is being being ignored in, in policy making, um, and and so uh, so maybe 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 Rotterdam is, is an exception. Maybe it works quite well, um, but but I, I, I and and but so but I, I will say what the, it, it 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 is. I we can see it is changing though. So in the past 10, 20 years, things are are changing more and more, and and and, and these organizations are being involved um, um, more. But for example, when you look what I started out with look at the sustainable development goals there's no there's nothing and which is a very important framework at the international level there's no no uh, concern for religion whatsoever in the sustainable development goals eh? so, so 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 that's um uh, i think that comes to prove that that there we still need to go a long way in um in in in, in including the religious dimension of things um, in in policy making and Planning. Yeah. I'd like to move on. To, uh, are you uh, uh, both yeah. your questions answered, Antoinette? Yeah, yeah. thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, well, we'll be moving on to Nanjala. Can you ask your question? Hello. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Um, my question is: Can we separate religion and politics? Because we've seen situations where religious leaders have taken up political positions. And we hope that they are going to carry on the vision of the religion to the politics side, but things change. So how far can we take this religion in terms of mixing it with politics? Yeah, thank you for your question. So can we? So it, it, can, it, it, it can we can we mix religion and politics and, and and also religion and development? I think it's the, the, those are very similar questions. When I all the examples I gave of religious organizations being involved in policy making. Um, advising, etc. That's a positive contribution of religion to to development and to public policy and to politics. Therefore, and so 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 there's no need for separation there. I will say this: there very often the principle of separation of church and state or religion and state is misunderstood, right? Um, because the principles of of separation of church and state, what it means is that churches should not have uh, an undue influence. On decision making, political decision making, and in, in and vice versa, um, the state should not have an involvement in the internal autonomy of churches. That's what the principle means. But it doesn't mean that religious groups cannot express their opinions, cannot make a contribution to political debate and and to development matters. So so there's 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 two different things. Um, if it's if the state, if politics is subordinate to religion, that's a problem. Right? That violates the principle of, of separation between church and state. But if religious organizations, um, just like any other civil society organizations, express their convictions on a particular topic, um, why, why would that be a problem? It can, it can be very beneficial, um, as long as there's no subordination. Yeah. OK, thank you for your answer. Um, uh, next one, uh, that is Krishna Nath. Hey, uh, the lecture was quite interesting, but uh, coming from India, like a um, really multi-religious land, I wanted to ask you what exactly would be the motive of religion promoting local development? Like, what are they aiming at? At the end of the day, if a religious group is intervening in development policies, is it something out of a real motive to, motive to 
register some kind of development and give people the necessary skills or promote their own religious interest and later uh, later translate it into a communal society yeah thank you for your your question i think what we want what we aspire to first of all um is uh that we um uh, i think there's three things okay um one is that of course every religious group will try to promote their own interests but we all do you know what i mean um that that's that's how politics works there's everyone has their opinions and, and wants to get them uh further right in in politics but i think i think there's there's three things we need to focus on first um uh let's start with the negative we need to find ways to prevent religious conflict right religions uh, religions always you know there's always this potential for conflict and so if we get them to talk to each other um that that, that that's always positive so so we only need to prevent religious conflict that that's the first second would be um that we should take the specific needs of individual religious groups individual religious minorities into consideration that's a moral imperative right that's a human right and third, and that's I think the positive contribution here, is that religious groups can make a very positive contribution to development. They already do, um, and they can do much more. Um, and and so we need to harness that contribution. So so those will be the three uh, the three uh, three goals I can come up with right now um, to 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 really um, associate religious groups with with development and discussions about it. Okay, thank you. Uh, I, we have two more questions. Hopefully, we can do it a bit quickly. I think you all have next uh, lessons at uh, one uh, next lesson at one o'clock. So the last two questions. Uh, first, Nicole, can you ask your question? Uh, thank you, Dennis, for, for your presentation. I think my question is related to Krishna's uh, question. Um, I would like to ask uh, because there is a lot of division between different religions. So don't you do you think maybe this also contribute to recognition of the contribution of religion to development and my second question is that what do you think could uh, could be a strategy to reinforce the network between between the the different religions because if if, if there is a lot of population uh, that has religion and and a lot of religions uh, contribute to development, uh, don't, it, it, it could be uh, like a better improvement for development if this, uh, if the religions uh, join in in a way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you for your question. So I, I think the, the, the neglect of religion in social sciences is now being overcome and there's incre increasingly more research about it and also about the uh, um the, the 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 relation and the contribution of religion to development in fact um to prepare for this this lecture um professor jordina gomez sent me uh, an article that uh, that really stresses this, this i think you could ask her for this article that really underlines um that there's increasingly more research about the contribution of, of religion to development um so so it, it is changing um and, and and i think that that is positive um but much more can be done right um um, so, so let, let, let me say that. The other thing, um, uh, the other question you asked is, well, yeah, religions should work together, but for that to happen, I think we should really promote um, the development of um, dialogue mechanisms, of channels of, of, of discussion, right? Um, and uh, just like, like was done in, in Manizales in Colombia, for example, um, or, or in Rotterdam. Um, but so with the, 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 those platforms should be, should be created channels um, for, 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 for dialogue between religions um, and, and they should be facilitated, I, I think. And, and we should invest in that much more because that way we can really benefit from it. And also, you know, I, I, another thing is we, we should eliminate obstacles for, the, for, the, for, for, for religious organizations to work. Um, 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 in, 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 in humanitarian projects. I mean, there, there's, there's, there's countries where, where it's, it's illegal um, for religious organizations to operate uh, uh, charities. Um, for example, in Cuba, right? that's just not possible um, because of the, 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 the communist ideology. And just the idea the state should take care of all social projects. Um, and, uh, but, but, but the state is, is, is failing um, and the model isn't working. And so religious organizations want to do things, but they're not allowed to, right? So, so we need to, to, to remove those obstacles. Um, 
but dialogue is always always the, the answer i think yeah okay thank you for that uh, uh question uh i have a question uh for the group especially for uh, maybe anesta can answer do you have a lecture at one o'clock exactly i have a lecture you, do you have a lecture at one o'clock so should we uh, stop at one o'clock exa exactly uh it depends on which major i do have a meeting but i don't know the other majors of iss uh, okay. but it depends on each of us it, we, don't, okay. we don't have the same calendar thank thank you for your answer that means that some of you will have a new lecture at uh, at one o'clock so unfortunately there are two questions who haven't been answered and they're excellent uh, you can we can read them in the chat um, may, uh, Dennis, I will send you those questions so you can uh, maybe you can give an answer uh, uh, in in written uh, for the last two uh, um, questions. Uh, wh what I would like to do is to thank you for your very informative lecture. Yeah, um, it's a topic we all think we all have strong feelings about. It's it's um, the fact in itself that we can have an open discussion about this. Uh, this the, 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 about the, the role of society in religion. I think that's that's price worthy in itself. So, thank you so much for opening uh, some insights into this uh, in, into this uh, specific uh, uh, topic. Um, and uh, well, uh, maybe you can all give a applause. Put on your microphone and give an applause for Mr. Paper. Thank you very much, Dennis. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Um, and uh, yeah, you've got my email address. I'm 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 available for for any questions. So um, yeah, it's it, it was a pleasure, and uh, I wish you the best of luck with this uh, this module. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Albert, thank you, and, and also thank you, Georgina, for inviting me. Yeah. And uh, Bernardo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thanks a lot, Denise. And uh, we will forward you the questions. Uh, maybe I see that in the chat some people are posting the last question. So maybe we use this last five minutes to collect those questions so we can forward them to yep. you. Uh, thanks a lot. <laughs> Indeed, very insightful session. Albert, you have something else to tell? Yes, me? I have something to ask yeah. for the group. Um, uh, first, I want to uh, apologize for the students who haven't been uh, uh, given a possibility to get an answer to the question. Um, what I uh, uh, told you about in the beginning of the lecture I want to uh, organize something which will help you to meet each other. You're going to do group work and group work only works if you know one another, not just do a project together, but also get a chance to know each other. Now we're in very, very difficult times. So what I'd like to pr propose is something that you can also say, I, I'm not quite comfortable with it. Yeah. So my idea is to do a group walk outside using your telephone and whatsapp so when we create the groups for the group work my idea is that you organize a walk together go to the beach go to somewhere else and maybe some students are not able to to be there but they're asked to also do a walk outside somewhere else and then communicate through the WhatsApp group function. Yeah? This will give you an opportunity to get to know each other a bit better and also to get some exercise because that's also very important in these times. So this is my innovative ideas. I'd like to hear your um, thoughts about it, positively or negatively in the group chat. Yeah? So shoot, you can, you can just shoot me if you want. Can I can I say something? Yes, yes, Ernesto. Yeah. I have to go in four minutes, but I can propose a more traditional one, like is actually meeting real life who, for the ones that wants to. So if I'm in a group, I'm more than welcome to go to the beach, but in person. Yeah. Okay. So basically, it's it's a beach walk, eh? but you're not all in uh, in 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 the Hague uh, at this point in time, uh, but. But it's it's a walk a few meters apart from one another. We have to be safe, but still we will see each other, connect through the telephone, and maybe some of you will actually be walking in Germany, for all I care, in the woods, but also will be joined on the WhatsApp. Yeah. Because you need to get to know one another. 
otherwise you can't build a proper business. It's all for the assignment, you know. Yeah. If you don't feel comfortable, don't feel obliged. It's not part of the curriculum. You won't be graded for the work. It's just an idea because I think we all, but it's based on the assumption that we all want to go out and talk to each other. Yeah. Okay. And also I'm using uh, uh, that uh, Georgina is not here so I can test my idea without, she also was enthusiastic. Okay. I only see positive uh, comments. So that means that next Friday I will uh, come up with proper instructions for the group work. Yeah. But again, if you're not feeling comfortable with it, we'll do something else. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll find another way. Yeah. But, but it's, I think it's very important to get to know where you have a, a project with two universities and we only see, see each other on this crappy screen, uh, this uh, beautiful screen. Yeah. Okay. Only positive uh, uh, remarks so far. Then the last uh, uh, word is another thank you to Dennis and also to you. Thank you for uh, uh, joining here in this presentation. And uh, good luck with all the uh, rest of the activities. And I see you next Friday at the first work group meeting. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I wish you a great weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Happy weekend. Bye.